When I first started to study the Bible with Jehovah's Witnesses, one of the first doctrines that I learned and that I found to be very profound was that of Jesus Christ's return to kingdom power in the year 1914. Uh, the year 1914 uh, was calculated through examining Bible prophecies and measuring some times and some points in history uh, that uh, occurred many years ago, and uh, adding these times together and arriving at the year 1914. The date uh, 607 BCE is a significant historical uh, mark from which to start calculating uh, the 2,520 days uh, or seven times that uh, bring us to the year 1914. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining that in this video. If you want to understand uh, how the year 1914 was calculated by Jehovah's Witnesses, it's uh, a worthwhile uh, research project of your own. And you can just Google it in, on the internet and uh, you'll find some answers. In regards to uh, this calculation, however, if you do a search on the internet, you'll find a lot of uh, contention and arguments and uh, people who will uh, spend a lot of time and effort and money uh, undermining that doctrine. And uh, it's the research that uh, these people do also is quite significant and they bring up some very good arguments. And so uh, I was having difficulty believing the 1914 doctrine because uh, it was under so much uh, contention. So I decided to uh, do some research myself. And one of the things I noticed uh, about all the researches is that they would undermine the state, the starting date, 607 BCE, and uh, whatever uh, they found that might uh, undermine it, they would uh, publish that and uh, wipe their hands and say, okay, that's it, 1914 is not right. So I decided that uh, there's got to be another way. And uh, that's what I'm going to explain to you in this video, is that I found a way to determine whether 1914 is the correct, real date that Jesus Christ returned in kingdom power. And I used a completely different method to search for it. I did not involve the year 607 BCE because there's just too much contention. And I resolved in my own mind uh, the doctrine. What started me on my quest uh, was a scripture in Revelation chapter 12, uh, which explains uh, the arrival of God's kingdom and it helps to arrange the events. And I'll read that scripture to you. It's uh, Revelation chapter 12, and it starts in verse 10. It says there, And I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come to pass the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. Because the accuser of our brothers has been hurled down. So right away when I, I, I read the scripture it flies in the face of a, a, a Jehovah's Witness doctrine that says uh, that Satan was cast down to the earth after 1914. So carefully examine the scripture. It says because Satan is cast down the kingdom arrives. So Satan should be cast down before 1914, if that is the date that Jesus Christ became king, not after. So following the Bible, uh, it helped me on my quest. This hurling down or casting down to the earth of uh, Satan is described in a little more detail in verses uh, just prior to the one in uh, Revelation 12, 10. And uh, I'll read it to you. It's in, it starts in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 7. And there it says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels battled with the dragon, and the dragon and its angels battled. But it did not prevail. 
neither was a place found for them any longer in heaven. So down the great dragon was hurled the original serpent, the one called Devil and Satan, who is misleading the entire inhabited earth. He was hurled down to the earth, and his angels were hurled down with him. So here we have uh, described perhaps one of the greatest battles that has ever occurred in the history of the universe between the most powerful creatures. So, do you think that the, this battle which starts in heaven and then finishes on the earth would somehow go unnoticed to this planet's inhabitants? Give it some thought. I didn't think so. If you've spent some time reading the Bible, then uh, you should already know that uh, angels don't have to be invisible. And that angels uh, can be seen. And uh, they've been seen in, uh, uh, by themselves or in very large groups, uh, like the time uh, the shepherds saw the angels when Jesus was born. And so it occurred to me that uh, if these angels the most powerful creatures in the universe, are having a battle in heaven, and this battle concludes on the earth, then there ought to be some visible, tangible, historical evidences that this earth's inhabitants, yes, us, that we could see. And so that uh, then led to me uh, looking for uh, the possibility that there might be some kind of evidence that we should be watching for in the Bible, that's described in the Bible. So, looking through the Bible, there is in fact a clue in uh, Luke, which Jesus Christ himself gives us, that has uh, an evidence that we could be watching for. And it's in Luke chapter 10 and verse 18. This is what it says. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So there we have it. It's a blatant clue. Jesus Christ is describing what Satan's fall from heaven might manifest. So what is it that we should be looking for? Lightning. And this lightning should occur some time before 1914, because in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10, it said that Satan would be cast down, and then Christ would become king. So, how do we find lightning? So, if we're expected to see this lightning, then it can't be ordinary lightning, otherwise we wouldn't find it. How would we know between any kind of ordinary mundane type of lightning uh, that it was Satan being cast down. So, this lightning that Jesus Christ is talking about must be some amazingly, incredibly powerful manifestation of light. A powerful light. And uh, if, if it's Jesus Christ who is uh, assisting in this hurling down of uh, Satan to the earth, uh, please remember that when Jesus Christ uh, last came to the earth, uh, as recorded in the Bible, and he came to the earth to talk to the Apostle Paul, uh, that it was a very, very powerful flash of light that uh, was manifested there also, and uh, probably caused uh, Paul's temporary blindness. Please now go to part two where we will find out that the words Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 10 and verse 18 were not said in vain. We really will find the lightning that Jesus Christ spoke about.